for many of the hunters in this community, there seems to be a consensus when it comes to understanding the weapons of this world. Whether they be new or veterans of the game, they may take one look at the heavy bowgun and decide something like, I have to manage ammunition as well as build the whole set dedicated to a specific weapon? No thanks, too rich for my blood. Or in regards to the hammer, Oh yeah, the big old rock on a stick is just a simple matter of walking up and down monster's face and giving it a Now, of course, everybody is entitled to their own beliefs and opinions, but there is one weapon that towers above them all when it comes to objectively being misunderstood. And that weapon is the subject of today's video. What we have here is the lance. Howdy y'all, my name is Kanan96 and welcome to the Agony of Gaming, the satirical review series where the cringy comedy is guaranteed but the factual information is not. If you are a veteran role-playing gamer and the term tank and spank puts a smile on your face then go ahead and drop a like on the video. This week's weapon is one that required a lot of warming up to, primarily because I used the gun lance so much in the previous game that when it came to the regular lance, its relevancy was a bit questionable from a layman's perspective. You see, for individuals who have no experience with either weapon, they are regarded as two halves of the same coin because they are both low mobility, highly defensive weaponry with the best blocking capabilities in the entire game. Also, the uncreative name of Gun Lance really doesn't help that fact. I for one shared in this mentality at first and actually wasn't looking forward to using this weapon for three live streams in a row simply because I thought it was just a less explodey version of the gun lance and there are few things that make my jeans fit tighter than explosions. It wasn't until I stopped trying to compare it to any other weapon that I finally realized that the lance was more than meets the eye. Gosh, I really hope someone comments below, Monster Hunter Transformer crossover confirmed, Whee! When I first took the lance out on a hunt, I drew my weapon, walked up to the monster, and started spamming the X button, only to see these tiny little damage numbers pop up, and was immediately dissuaded. I've got big blocks but little pokes, was my first thought. Ain't no one being the breadwinner with damage like that. And then, as I was getting attacked by the monster, of course my instinct was to just block all of his nonsense. But here's the thing, if you sit there, holding the block button all day, how are you going to actually defeat the monster? I spent a whole stream struggling with this concept, really embracing the whole agony of gaming thing. <laughs> it wasn't until the second day that I began to learn, you must use your defense as your offense. I will explain exactly what that means here shortly, but for now, let's get into the fundamentals. Your standard moveset is you can poke them with the X button or poke them with the A button. The only practical difference being that the A button pokes them at a 45 degree angle and does slightly more damage. And of course, we have your guard. This is one of the strongest blocking abilities in the game, capable of blocking almost everything right out the gate. A keyword being almost. There are skills in the game that can make the more dangerous attacks slightly less unblockable. I tend to run at least one point of the guard skill and one point of guard up. And that covers like 95% of the attacks in the game as far as I know. And for the other 5%, it's quite simple. You just rely on your faith in our Lord and Savior! Now, for those of you that would like to play a little more aggressively, we have what is known as the insta-block. This move sucks. And by that I mean I suck at using this move. With insta-block equipped, when you press the ZR at the exact instant that a monster attacks, you will be able to perform a counter maneuver that deals a mediocre damage. The tolerance for actually activating this counter is tighter than a recently divorced woman's sweatpants. 
it will really test your monster moveset knowledge because getting the timing wrong will get you sent back to camp really quickly. The biggest boon of the insta-block is that it does not require any skills in order to counter every single attack in the game. The only thing it requires is a bit of precognition. Now that I've already mentioned the insta-block, let me explain my comment from earlier in the video about your defense being your offense. That move is actually one of five different counter moves that the Lance is able to do. Two of those come with the Lance by default and the other two are switch skills that you can swap between. These counter moves serve as a way to turn a monster's attack into an advantage for yourself. And who doesn't like negating damage while dealing damage right back? Let's start with the default ones, which I believe are the most useful because they don't require a resource other than stamina. Pressing the A button while holding your guard will have your hunter enter a counter stance. After 3 seconds of being in the stance, your hunter will do a counter thrust, which deals a significant amount of damage. But if you are attacked in those 3 seconds, you will instantly follow up with a high thrust. Uh, this move primarily serves as a combo continuer for when you get attacked by a monster to just ignore that nonsense and keep the poking barrage going. That Thunderlord is going to be the Lord of Swiss Cheese when I'm done with him! The big brother to the counter stance is the Power Guard. This move, as far as I know, is the only 360 degree guard in the entire game outside of switch skills, meaning no matter where you get hit from, you can block it. After you take a hit with this move, you can either do a Leaping Thrust, which is a multi-hit attack great for building your status ailments, or a fully powered Counter Thrust. There are two main ways of activating the Power Guard, either by pressing B after initializing the Counter Stance, or pressing B after receiving a hit while guarding. The biggest downside is that it drains your stamina unlike anything else in Monster Hunter. Dual Blades Demon Mode ain't got nothing on just taking a knee, apparently. Who knew that crouching could be so exhausting? Maybe all our hunters have that gosh darn rheumatoid arthritis I keep hearing about in the TV commercials while I'm trying to watch Family Feud. The next two counters are both switch skills. We have the boring one and the fun one. Comment below which one you want me to talk about first. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's talk about the boring one first. The Anchor Rage is a switch skill with a very awesome name, but a very meh function. By pressing ZL plus A, you are able to counter a monster attack, following it up with a very powerful attack of your own, while also giving yourself a damage increase for about 5 seconds. This damage increase is indicated by your weapon either glowing red for the level 1 or yellow for the level 2 with how powerful the monster's attack being what dictates the level you get. Even if you go through the trouble of blocking an attack strong enough to get you to level 2, it's like between 10 and 12% damage increase by my math for only a few seconds? Oh, instead of dealing 25 damage per poke, I am now dealing 28! Somebody stop me! I'm literally insane! If we were dealing greatsword damage, then yes, 10% would be quite significant. But for the Lance? Come on, Capcom. 20 or nothing. And then the final counter is the Spiral Thrust. With the cost of just a single wire bug, you are able to zip around the map like you put rockets on your feet. The two hits this move causes are actually very damaging, so it's great for more than just relocation. And if you activate this move right as a monster is attacking, you are not only able to mitigate that attack, but also give yourself a damage increase that falls in between the level 1 and level 2 of the Anchor Rage. This move is flashy, fun, and effective. What more could you want? Now, one thing that all of these cool blocking and countering maneuvers have in common, uh, aside from the Spiral Thrust because it is simply the best, is that for the most part, they all involve just standing still. Now, if you would prefer to be proactive rather than reactive, then the move you need is the dash attack. By pressing X plus A while guarding, you are able to sprint forward, lance first, while dealing damage the entire time. 
This is great for closing gaps or pursuing monsters that may be moving away from you. Dashing for three seconds will cause you to increase your speed where your damage output is even higher, uh, but you have less directional control. However, if you conclude this super dash by using the A button's twin thrust, you will dish out one of the strongest attacks the lance is capable of. Landing a fully charged twin thrust on a monster's weak point is just very satisfying. Really makes you feel like a badass jouster. The alternative to the dash attack is the shield charge. It has a very similar purpose with a very different function. Costing a hefty chunk of stamina, you are able to charge forward a short distance, shield first, guarding against any attack you would normally be able to while stationary. Should you make contact with the monster, you will deal a decent amount of KO damage and can double down on this by pressing X to do a shield bash, again with a large amount of KO damage for potentially stunning the monster. But if you are playing multiplayer, especially if you got hunting horns, hammers, or bow guns using explosive ammunition, your contribution to stunning the monster is probably not great and going out of your way to use your shield rather than your lance may get you in trouble. So when it comes to shield charge, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Recommended only for single player. Now it is time to randomly introduce a new subsection into the agony of gaming called the Dishonorable Mentions, where I talk about a part of the subject I do not like for whatever reason, whether those reasons be legitimate or arbitrary. And at any point, should you disagree, feel free to comment below and tell me just how wrong I am. For the first one, this will actually be quite short, but I imagine as the series continues and I inevitably get crabbier and crabbier with age, the subsection will gradually get longer and longer. Introducing the biggest waste of two wire bugs seen in Monster Hunter Rise, the Twin Vine. Let's talk about what this move does, or is supposed to do, and then we'll talk about why you should never use it. You jam a kunai into the monster that anchors you to that point, and by pressing ZL plus B, you can launch yourself at the monster, should it decide to relocate. While airborne, you're able to do a jumping thrust that deals very mediocre damage. Uh, also, while the kunai is attached, the monster is supposed to have more aggro towards you specifically. However, in practice, this is very unnoticeable. <laughs> and God forbid you should actually miss with your little pocket knife stab, because you will lose both of your wire bugs anyways. Even if you land the move and don't have a third wire bug available, you have now taken away all your opportunities to use either your anchorage or your spiral thrust for a few seconds on top of the ability to do a wire bug recovery should you take a hit. The dash attack will allow you to do more damage while also closing distance effectively and should you need to mount the monster either use one of your other switch skills or just jump while again using the dash attack. I really cannot stress the uselessness of this move enough. While using the lance, under no circumstances should you ever be pressing ZL plus X. I said it once earlier in the video, but I'll say it again here. The lance is just really one of the most misunderstood weapons. Now granted, its general function since its conception is still pretty much the same. You're blocking monster attacks and you're poking them with the sharp stick. But having so many different means of countering monster moves in the game really sets this weapon apart from all others, because they may have one or even two means of countering an attack, but with the lance having five, your options are frankly staggering. Even a complete novice like me with no idea what they're doing can tank and spank almost anything in the game with little to no need to heavily rely on skills. For all you monster hunters out there that have been neglecting this weapon, whether you be new or veterans, I beseech you to pick up the lance and give it a try. You may not set any speedrun records, but you might find yourself having more fun than you might have guessed.
I would like to sincerely thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing if you haven't done so already. This weapon really took me for a loop because I thought I'd have a tough time saying anything positive about it before starting using the lance, but afterwards, now I'm kind of disappointed I didn't use it sooner. That is 12 down and 2 to go. Next video is going to be on the heavy bowgun and then finally concluding with the weebiest of weeb weapons, the longsword. That is going to be an interesting stream this weekend. I hope to see you there. If not, then until the next one, this is not goodbye for good, just goodbye for now. Kill him with the monkey. It'll make for good YouTube content. Yeah! Nice. Hey, way to go, Mario! What boss?